Max Verstappen claims terrible pole for Saturday's sprint race at the Miami Grand Prix. His words, not mine, I promise. However, as has been the case several times this season, the biggest stories come from off the circuit. From RacingNews365.com, my name is Nick Golding, and I'm joined, as always, by lead editor Ian Parks, who has possibly, this could be a contender for background of the season. Saudi Arabia not is bad, the top is so far, not but bad. that's... Let us know in the comment section if that's the best background so far. It's close. Ian, as I mentioned, the big stories are off the circuit. We've got to talk about Max first, his seventh sprint poll. He said himself it was terrible over the radio. And actually, throughout the day, he's looked uncomfortable in the car. But as always, he does the business when it matters most. It just goes to show, Nick, doesn't it? If he's coming out with a comment like that, when he's on song, just how much of an advantage he and that RB car have. Just absolutely staggering what he's been able to do in that Red Bull today. As he said, terrible. And he asked over the radio, where is everybody? Because he wasn't expecting, I don't think, to be on pole position when he was told on pole. I'm sure he was fully expecting to be somewhere midway down the top 10, arguably. But none of his nearest rivals were once again able to lay a glove on him and he goes and walks away with what is it now how many sprint balls has he got it's quite That's a number seven, I know. seven out of 14. seven out of 14 50 percent there all, we go 50 <laughs> percent quick which maths. is a hell of a ratio yeah but it looked like there was going to be a decent challenge at one stage certainly in sq2 i was fully expecting the mclarens to yeah. give him a hell of a run for his money yeah. But from what I've been told, the McLarens just did not work on the soft tyre. Pirelli have come out themselves uh, post-qualifying. Uh, Mario Isla, the Pirelli director, has turned around and said there that they themselves have not quite got a handle as to why the softs didn't work. Track evolution didn't ramp up as much as they were expecting was one of the theories. But yes, for McLaren in particular, after looking so good on the mediums, after really threatening to give Max a good run for his money, really didn't show up in SQ3 at all. And I think we've got Oscar in sixth, Lando down in ninth, and McLaren, of course, have come with a massive upgrade package for this weekend. They have absolutely turned that car pretty much upside down with the number of upgrades they've got it. Front wing, front corner, front suspension, side cover, inlets, louvers, rear wing, rear bodywork, you name it, they've thrown the kitchen sink at that car. Lando, given everything that has been outlined, Oscar, only 50% of that package. And yet, here we go, he ends up three places ahead of his teammate. As I say, soft tyres not working. Will it be any different from... Um, the Grand Prix qualify tomorrow afternoon. Wait and see. But once again, a terrible Max. Terrible. And yet he's still on pole. It's important to mention, obviously, for those who are new to F1, in the sprint format, qualifying is a bit different because the first two parts are completed on the medium compound yeah. with only the last part on the soft. So I guess for race pace, that probably bodes well for McLaren if they're making the mediums work quickly. Uh, we've got to talk about Leclerc as well, though, because... He entered the sprint qualifying, having only completed one hot lap in the only free practice of the weekend after he spanned on the exit of turn 16, couldn't get his car facing the right direction. Eventually, his clutch started to overheat, so he couldn't engage reverse, and it led to a red flag, an embarrassing red flag, but after one hot lap, P2 on the grid for tomorrow's sprint race isn't bad going. <laughs> Just shows that we don't need practice. Yeah. It's brilliant. We don't need three sessions of practice going into a normal Grand Prix weekend. If Charles Leclerc can come out and do one hot lap, as you've mentioned, after trying to do a ridiculous three-point turn in that car, in the SF24, one hot lap, and he goes and lands second on the grid for spring qualifying. I should say, yes, yeah, spring qualifying. I have a little bit of different format with the tyres, what they do there. But that's not a bad performance. Hats off to Charles. Um, one, one hot lap, and he does that. Yeah. Yes, he made a bit of a fall himself. He knows it himself. But at the end of the day, he's come good. At least we know he should give Max a run for his money. And Checo on third. 
So we got on Red Bull 1 3, the surprise. Now, would Next we have predicted point. this given how useless what we are at predictions as we've proven over the course of this? Would yes. we have predicted Daniel Ricciardo <laughs> in form? No. I think yes, because our predictions are normally so wild, we would have predicted this kind of thing. However, we actually didn't make any predictions for sprint qualifying, which is probably why this nope. has happened. <laughs> A great effort from Daniel. Yeah. Uh, are we finally starting to see him come good? We had a little bit of a glimpse of what Daniel could do with the new chassis. Psychological, perhaps. Who knows? He said he felt a slight difference during the Chinese Grand Prix weekend with that new chassis. As far as Lauren Mekies was concerned, the Red Bull team principal, he didn't think he was going to make that much of a difference. But with Daniel, as mentioned before, we know he's a confidence driver. We know a lot of it comes from up here. So now he's coming to this weekend blown his teammate away, Yuki Sonoda, and he's landed fourth on the grid. And he's looking in good shape to finally score his first point of the season. He even believes he could be on the podium. That's the confidence he's taking into the sprint race on Saturday afternoon. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Well, Saturday morning Saturday for morning. you, for us in Europe, Saturday, for, those know, who, yeah. Yeah, for those who are watching Europe, it's quite late. Um, it's actually now just almost midnight for me. Uh, we've got to talk finally before we move on to the big talking points. Mercedes, both George Russell and Lewis Hamilton knocked out in SQ2, George P11, Lewis P12 and clattered the wall for good measure. Yeah. It's just, it, it's we, we've said this a couple of times, but it is from bad to worse to even worse. Well, they just don't have a hand warm that guy. The, the look on Toto Wolf's face said it all. A look of thunder in many respects when it panned to him in the garage just as SQ2 had finished, a look of, why can we not get this right? The team, as we know, did everything that it could over the winter, came in with a new concept, and it's not worked. They fully believed that they'd got a handle on this now, coming into this season, and no matter what they're trying, no matter what setups they choose, no matter which direction Lewis goes, no matter which direction George goes, at the moment, they are fundamentally struggling to understand how best to get the best out of that car. As you mentioned, not helped at all by Lewis. It's in the exit wall of uh, uh, turn 16. A lot of drivers did, actually. And yeah. just going back to Daniel Ricciardo, he did it twice. Yeah. One of which he said was quite a big hit, but somehow he came out of it with flying colors. Lewis, on the other hand, no. P12, George P11, another struggle for them. Looks like another struggle over the course of this weekend going into Saturday and Sunday as well. Another tough weekend ahead for Mercedes, it seems right. I, I think we've spoken enough about qualifying. It's time to get on to the two big talking points, starting off with the one that has been over F1 coming into the weekend and was announced on Wednesday that Adrian Newey has or will be leaving not just Red Bull F1, but Red Bull as a company altogether at early stages of next year, the news broke whilst you were traveling to the airport to fly out to Miami. And it was myself and Sam who covered it for a midweek F1 update. We shared our thoughts. What are your thoughts? Cause you've not had a chance to share what you think of Nui leaving. <laughs> he's turned around and spoken today for the first time. And he's turned around and said that he needs a break. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing this for one hell of a long time in fairness to him. The most successful designer in Formula One history. 25 constructors and drivers titles to his name. He's earned his stripes and more. He says he needs a break. He's been with Red Bull for 19 seasons. He's mentioned that 2021, that epic title tussle between Lewis and Max, took an awful lot out of him, as well as, at the same time, getting to grips with the new regulations that came in for 2022. And he and his team, of course, we have to give credit to its team. This is not just Adrian on his yeah. own. But he and his team coming up with a car that has and is and will almost certainly next season dominate and is dominating Formula One at present. So it's with absolute entry that ahead of 2026, the next major regulation change, as we know, not just with regards to the power unit, but the aerodynamics, the bodywork that has to go into accommodating this new power unit. 
he has now decided that it is time to take a break. The upshot is, we all believe, okay, he's going to have a break. He's going to get two months off in the winter, ahead of, or maybe even a bit longer, this, what we believe, he has managed to negotiate. He handles the managerial team, and his manager, by the way, being Eddie Jordan, or the people, as we've now come to learn. It looks like if he joins a new team for next season, it's going to be somewhere around March, April plan. So that will be, when you think that this season ends early December, that will give him a good three, four months before he joins a new team. We are all expecting it's Ferrari. They've got the money. They've got the resource. They've got Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton made a big, big play during the driver's press conference here in Miami on Thursday for wanting to work with Adrian. He was really bigging him up. Adrian himself responded, thanking Lewis for those kind words. Is this a marriage that's going to happen in the future? We all know as Lewis wants that eight title. It's why he's hung around in F1. It's why he's decided to leave Mercedes and join Ferrari, believing that eventually the Scuderia will get it right with its car, with the 26 regulations. If it can land Adrian Newey, and he will have near enough eight, nine months to work on that 26 car. You've got to remember, Nick, the 26 regulations are not even out yet. The teams yeah. have got no idea what they are going to be designing around the new power unit. They're not due to be released until another two or three months' time, somewhere around the summer. So it's not as if anybody's going to get a real march on the rest of the field going into 26 because we've had the regulations in store now for a little long. No, we've got the new power unit. We've got these new regulations. Adrian, when he joins... And I'm saying when not if I am convinced he's going to join a new team, most likely Ferrari, as I'm saying, will be as much up to speed as anybody else in this paddock going into 2026. Williams have made a play, managed to run an exclusive overnight that Williams are in the market for him. James Fowles has held talks. More talks are going to be held. People are going to say, why on earth would Adrian Newey go to Williams when he could go to someone like Ferrari. Bottom line is, that's where his career really began. That's where his career took off. He helped Williams win titles with Mansell, with Prost in the early 90s. And it would be quite a storied transformation for him to then go back at where it really all started for him. They've got the money. Doriton Capital has got the money, the owners of Williams, to bring him in. It would be on his doorstep as well. Because the thing with Ferrari, the one caveat is that he does not want to go to live in Maranello. So it will be working remotely the entire time with the exception of when he's in the panic. Will Ferrari wear that? Yes, if they want to land Louis. That final, let's, let's say that final piece of the jigsaw for them going into 26, because Fred Passer since he came in as team principal at the start of last season, been building up his team. Now he's got Lewis Hamilton the driver. That final piece of him, I'm almost certain, is getting Adrian Newey, the man they believe can design them the car for 26 that will dominate F1, like Red Bull is currently doing, like Mercedes did previously when the 2014 power unit, power unit regulations came in. I'm certain he's going somewhere else, without a shadow of a doubt. He'll have a break. He'll have his three months, three, four months off, as I mentioned, and then he'll move on. It just adds potentially another ingredient to 2026. We've been speaking so much about it, even though it's still 18 months away. Let us know in the comment section below where you think Newey is going to go. Something's been really interesting about the whole Newey conversation in Miami is obviously the questions put to Red Bull team principal Christian Horner. Now, Horner's been saying that the rest of the technical team are on long-term contracts. Max Verstappen as well. You know, it's not going to affect him. He's not going to suddenly pack up his bags and follow Adrian out of the exit door. We've heard the rumours linking him to Mercedes. Despite everything that Horner has said, do you think this might have an impact on Max? There are so many 
variables as to what Max to do. A lot of them we've already ran through yeah. over the course of various F1 updates and our podcasts, of course. Do I think he will leave? I don't think so, because he knows that this car is going to carry over into next season. I think if Max, and I'm, so what I'm saying there is that without a shadow of a doubt, I think Max will win this year's title. Yeah. On the back of that, I think we can almost certainly say he's going to win next year's title and he will become a five-time champion. The bigger picture, the bigger story for Max is 2026. And does he take a gamble? Okay, well, let's face it, it'll be a gamble wherever he goes because if he stays at Red Bull, he's got no idea as to whether the newly created powertrains department will give that car for that season the power unit required to continue his run of domination. Does he go to Mercedes? Proven power unit builders, when they came out in 2014 with the current 1.6 litre turbo, hy uh, turbo hybrid system that we've got now and run away with the F1 for eight consecutive seasons. Wherever he goes, as I say, it's, there's going to be no degree of certainty for 2026 because no one, as we stand here right now, even as we will stand here in a year's time, when I'm doing this in Miami, fingers crossed, hopefully, of course, will know just who is going to be the leader of the pack in 2026. So I'm convinced he will stay at Red Bull in 25. And if he is negotiate, gonna go in, going to negotiate his way out of his current Red Bull contract, then it will be from 26 onwards if he feels another team like Mercedes, who we know are making a massive play for him, he decides to go there. It's Louis Verstappen, and I know we're going to talk about Antonelli, of course, just giving us the stories off track that we're not getting on it. Unfortunately, in some respects, because, of course, Max is dominating, but we've said many times that you've got to give Red Bull and Max the credit that they deserve for what they're doing at the moment. It's just the way it is. But at least we're getting plenty of content talking about the stuff off track, mate. Well, listen, there's so much happening off the track that if there was stuff on the track, I think we'd all be awake until silly hours of the morning. You mentioned Kimi Antonelli, of course, the teenage Mercedes sensation who is, you know, destined for greatness. You know, he's being seen as the next Max Verstappen. Yeah. The big rumour of Miami is that actually his debut could be coming a hell of a lot sooner than we all expected. But actually, there's a lot of confusion over it But because it, is he allowed to make his debut at the age he is? And of course, he is only still 17 years old. If I'm yeah. correct. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't sure for a second. Uh, but the big question is, can he legally make his debut? Because as you know, we understand that the FIA can't, allow him to race because it'd be breaking their own rules he turns 18 on the sunday of the dutch grand prix weekend which means legally he is not allowed to drive in f1 until he turns 18. the rules are quite clear you have to have the requisite number of super license points which he has done because of what is achieved over the course of the junior categories but you, A, have to be 18 to drive in Formula 1. You also have to hold a driving license within the country of your birth. He's Italian. And in Italy, similarly, you cannot hold a driving license until you are 18. Now, we've discussed the FAA regulations at various stages. They have made it quite clear on a number of occasions their rules are black and white there are no gray areas until of course we come to the definition of the word stops which is something <laughs> else that we've discussed on this update today podcast previously. <laughs> not today but quite clearly these rules are there you have to be 18 to drive in f1 it's been said to me that if they decided to break the rules, if the FIA decided to break the rules, it would open up 
a whole can of worms that would really fall on the FIA then to, to answer as to why they've broken the regulations. We understand an application has been made by a team to try and get Kimmy exemption for him to drive at the age he is now, 17, and not wait until he turns 18 over the course of the Dutch Grand Prix weekend. The suggestion is Williams would like to have him in the car, replace Logan Sargent, who is, unfortunately for him, really struggling again this season. He was given another year after difficulties last season that he appeared to be coming out of towards the end of last season. James Valls, the team principal, opted to give him another season. It's really not working. So now... They want to try and get Antonelli in the car. The belief is he might be given the seat for next season. There is also the possibility that Williams would like him to serve as a warm-up act for Mercedes because he is a Mercedes junior at the end of the day. So could he go into the car next season for Mercedes as the replacement for Lewis Hamilton if they don't get Max to Stafford? It's a whole game being played here behind the scenes. A lot of politics going on. The bottom line is, I really do think that the FIA would be in a lot of trouble if they gave Antonelli an exemption because they'd be breaking their own rules. Well, not for the first time. I doubt this is the last we're going to hear of it. And of course, you know, let us know in the comment section below what you think, you know, is it right for Antonelli to be given a seat at 17 years old or should he despite his immense talent have to do what everyone else has to do now and wait until he's 18 let us know your thoughts Ian I'm aware that because of all the news off the track this is now I think officially the longest F1 update so it's we need a, a banner becomes... or something or some party popper so a very very quick prediction for the sprint race and qualifying tomorrow a sprint race Let's go, Daniel, on the podium. Why not? I'm going to say let's, the same. I'm going to say go the Daniel same. Daniel on the podium. He's, he's clearly got confidence. He's clearly happy with the car underneath him. To place it forth, he's happy. He's he's a happy boy. So let, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's go, Daniel, on the podium. And as for qualifying, I, I think McLaren are going to come good. I think we're yeah. going to see a better McLaren. And I reckon Oscar Orlando top three tomorrow. Okay, I agree with you. I think Ricardo for a, a sprint podium. I, I think we'd all love to see that as well after everything he's been yeah, through. Yeah, mate. In qualifying, I'm going to say, like today, obviously we're recording this, well, I say today, actually, for me, it is now Saturday morning. But <laughs> um, I'm going to say, mate. thank you very much. It's, it's the hard work. It's the, the love for F1. I'm going to say both Mercedes knocked out in Q2, just like they were for sprint qualifying, because I don't think they're going to make their car work. Let us know your thoughts and predictions in the comment section. Give us your top threes and your bold predictions so we can see who's the best and who's the worst. And I can tell you now, it's probably us who are the worst. From RacingNews365.com, this has been a record-breaking F1 update. We will catch you for the next one after the qualifying and the sprint race. Catch you later. Take care. Take care, folks.